released from, released from Darshai, Darshai lust or material activities. Ubagiyamanat, which is described or sung. Baba Oshadat, which is the right medicine for the material disease. Shrutra, the process of oral reception. Manaha, the subject matter of thought for the mind. Viramat, from the pleasing vibrations from such glorification. Kaha, who? Uttama Shloka, of the Supreme Personality of God. Of the Supreme Personality of God. Guna Anubhat, from describing such activities. Puman, a person. Virajeta can keep himself aloof. Vina, except. Pashugnat, either a butcher or one who is killing his own personal existence. So you can repeat. I mean, I'll, I'll just speak it first. Glorification of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is performing the parampara system, that is, it is conveyed from spiritual master to disciple such glorifications relished by those no longer interested in the false temporary glorification of this cosmic manifestation. Descriptions of the Lord are the right medicine for the conditioned soul undergoing repeated birth and death. Therefore, who will cease hearing such glorification of the Lord except a butcher or one who is killing his own self? You can repeat. Glorification of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is performed in the Parampara system. That is, it is conveyed from spiritual master to disciple. Such glorification is relished <coughs> by those no longer interested in the false temporary glorification of this cosmic manifestation. Descriptions of the Lord are the right medicine for the conditioned soul undergoing repeated birth and death. Therefore, who will cease such he will cease hearing such glorification of the Lord except a butcher or one who is killing his own self. So just remember this is Maharaj Pariksit speaking out of humility, thinking according <coughs> sorry, according to Vishwanath Jagvati Thakur, he is thinking himself unqualified to hear the pastimes of the Lord. And he is, you know, begging for the mercy of Shukadeva Goswami. Anyway, so purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami. Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. In India, it is the practice amongst the general populace to hear about Krishna either from Bhagavad Gita or from Srimad Bhagavatam in order to gain relief from the disease of repeated birth and death. Although India has now fallen, when there is a message that someone will speak about Bhagavad Gita or Srimad Bhagavatam, thousands of people still gather to hear. This verse indicates, however, that such recitation of Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam must be done by persons completely freed from material desires, nivritta tarshahai. Everyone within this material world, beginning from Brahma down to the insignificant aunt, is full of material desires for sense enjoyment, and everyone is busy in sense gratification, but when thus engaged, one cannot fully understand the value of Krishna Katha, either in the form of Bhagavad Gita or in Srimad Bhagavatam. If we hear the glories of the Supreme Personality Godhead from liberated persons, this hearing will certainly free us from the bondage of material activities, but hearing Srimad Bhagavatam spoken by a professional reciter cannot actually help us achieve liberation. Krishna Kata is very simple. 
In Bhagavad Gita, it is said that Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. As he himself explains, Matak Parataram Nanya Kinjin Asti Dhananjaya. O Arjuna, there is no truth superior to me. Bhagavad Gita, 7th chapter, text 7. Simply by understanding this fact, that Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead, one can become a liberated person. But especially in this age, because people are interested in hearing Bhagavad Gita from unscrupulous persons who depart from the simple presentation of Bhagavad Gita and distort it for their personal satisfaction, they fail to derive the real benefit. There are big scholars, politicians, philosophers, and scientists who speak on Bhagavad Gita in their own polluted way, and people in general hear from them, being uninterested in hearing the glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead from a devotee. A devotee is one who has no other motive for reciting Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam than to serve the Lord. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was therefore advised us to hear the glories of the Lord from a realized person, Bhagavata Paro Diya, Bhagavata Stane. Unless one is personally a realized soul in the science of Krishna consciousness, a neophyte devotee should not approach him to hear about the Lord, for this is strictly forbidden by Srila Sanatana Goswami, who quotes from the Padma Purana. Avaishnava mako kirnam kitam adikam mitam shavanam shavanam naivan kartavya vusarko jishta yatapaya. One should avoid hearing from a person not situated in Vaishnava behavior. A Vaishnava is nevrita trishna. That is, he has no material purpose. For his only purpose is to preach Krishna consciousness. So-called philosophers and uh, scholars, philosophers and politicians exploit the importance of Bhagavad Gita by distorting its meaning for their own purposes. Hmm. Therefore, this verse warns that Krishna Gita should be recited by a person who is Nivrita Trishna. Shukadeva Goswami epitomizes the proper reciter for Srimad Bhagavatam and Pariksit Maharaj who purposely left his kingdom and family prior to meeting death, epitomizes the person fit to hear it. A qualified reciter of Srimad Bhagavatam gives the right medicine, Bhavo Shuddhi, for the conditioned souls. The Krishna Conscious Movement is therefore trying to train qualified preachers to recite Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita throughout the entire world so that people in general in all parts of the world may take advantage of this movement and thus be relieved of the threefold miseries of material existence. Actually, I'm going to speak a little bit about this because it's a very long purport. So, Omagana Timiranda Shaganan Chanash Lakaya Chakshur Meditam Yena Tasmai Shikurave Namaha. So, of course, not only should one be realized in Krishna consciousness, but one should not be doing the recitation of Srimad Bhagavatam or Bhagavad Gita for any pecuniary purpose or any self-centered uh, purpose like Lord Chaitanya states. Vedanam Dajanam Sundurim Kavitam Va Jagadisha Kamaya. That uh, sometimes you find professional people reciting the Bhagavatam for followers, for money, to impress women, just like you'll see some, some of these uh, Bhagavad Saptaha performances. Actually, Prabhupada spoke very strongly against Bhagavad Saptahas. Yeah, Bhagavad Saptaha, of course, means that Saptaha means seven. So it means that <coughs> someone in the name of giving Bhagavatam recitation will speak for seven days, uh, imitating Shukadeva Goswami speaking for seven days to Maharaj Pariksit. Maybe a little water. Uh, we'll imitate Shukadev Goswami speaking for seven days to Maharaj Pariksit. And uh, generally, if you go to these Bhagavad Sapta recitals, you'll find that the women are all up front and the man is making some dramatic performance. Uh, he breaks out into song every uh, few minutes. And the women are going, uh, Govinda, 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 oh, we love you, Govinda, like that. And he's collecting a lot of money, and primarily he's concentrating on the 10th uh, canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. He, he may tell some other stories, like Dhruva Maharaj's story, and stories like that. <clears throat> but primarily it's the 
tenth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam that he's concentrating on the intimate pastimes of the Lord. So there's an interesting story about uh, this type of recitation and how one should avoid this type of recitation. One should not be uh, getting anything for the recitation of Bhagavatam. And that story is told in the Jaiva Dharma by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Once upon a time, there was this good devotee of the Lord. His name was Brajanath. And Brajanath, he actually had a, understood his uh, uh, position in the spiritual world. His Siddhadeya, he understood he was a coward boy. So he was quite an advanced devotee. And so he went uh, with his uncle to Jagannath Puri, and they took association with a great devotee there in Jagannath Puri. And he was explaining to this great devotee in Jagannath Puri that uh, he made his living by giving Bhagavatam class. And people give donations. He didn't charge, but people would give donations. And he got chastised very severely by this devotee. Those of you who read uh, Jaiva Dharma will know what I'm talking about. And he, he says, don't ever do that. It's a great offense to the Supreme Personality of God to give Bhagavatam class or to preach Krishna consciousness for, for some ulterior purpose. And in this case, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a sinful purpose. He wasn't misusing his money. He was just maintaining his body and soul together by the recitation of Bhagavatam. So actually, when you take money for some service, another point is, Prabhupada said, when someone takes money and gets a salary for some service, then it's not service, it's not service anymore. The only result, Prabhupada said, is the money. It's not devotional service. It's like someone's getting a salary. I mean, devotees can get maintained to do their service, obviously, in the temple. You know, we take care of the devotees. We don't say, you know, just find your own food in the forest. Uh, but when it's a question of salary, you know, and this is a big controversy right now, Prabhupada said it's just the money is the result from the activity. So anyway, so he was... He was advised, <coughs> Brajanath was advised, don't ever do that again, Brajanath. Basically, he felt so remorseful, he said, how can I be freed from this offense of having done this before? So he's taking it very, very seriously. How can I be freed from this offense? And uh, the sadhu said to Brajanath that actually, because you didn't do this deliberately, you should just continue uh, preaching Krishna consciousness and maintain yourself by some other simple means. It has nothing to do with your devotional service, which is really interesting. So, in other words, the presentation or the preaching of Krishna consciousness has to be done simply with the motive to please Krishna and to give Krishna consciousness to people. That's it. Not that I'm going to get followers, you know, disciples, or money, or people going to think I'm so nice. It has to be simply with the motive of pleasing Krishna. And of course, one may say, because we are not pure devotees, again, speaking about myself right now, uh, we're not pure devotees, so how can we actually speak Bhagavatam because our motives aren't pure? Well, even though we don't have this pure motive of uh, pleasing Krishna or pure compassion towards the conditioned souls, we should be thinking, I'm doing this to assist my spiritual master. And then because of Prabhupada's mercy, we should understand that Prabhupada, it is Prabhupada is empowering us or Prabhupada is speaking through us, then we can actually effectively speak Bhagavatam and we can, <clears throat> we can affect people's hearts because when people hear the Bhagavatam or hear Bhagavad Gita or Krishna Kata, it's described by Lord Kapiladev, Satam Prasanga Mama Virya Sampado. When one hears in the association of devotees, hearing the association of devotees is very important, it's more potent. Satam Prasanga. Uh, when one hears from a sadhu, the proper person, Mama Virya Samara, about Krishna's activities, of course, Mama Virya means Krishna's heroic activities. Actually, all of Krishna's activities are heroic. Mama Virya Samara talks. Samara. Bhavot, Satamba Sangam, Mama Virya Samara, Bhavot, what is it? Bhavanti Rikarna Rasayana Kata. To Joshana Dasu Apavargavar Manishwada Ratir Vakdinukravashati. Then, hearing from the proper person, that sound vibration enters from the hrit 
enters from the karna, the ear, to the vrit, and that it enables one to progress. Actually, is what Prabhupada said, you know, progress on the path of uh, Krishna consciousness. Shraddha-ratthir bhakti anukramashati. The one gets faith, one gets a taste, and ultimately one gets bhakti, or the perfection of Krishna consciousness. So this is, this is our process, to hear from the right person. Those who are... <coughs> Yeah, it's not that we should test everybody, are you completely pure of material desires, but those who are just dedicating their lives to serving their spiritual master and empowered by their spiritual master. And so Prabhupada empowered his devotees and empowers all of us to actually do that. So we'll continue with the purport. The instructions of Bhagavad Gita and the descriptions of Srimad Bhagavatam are so pleasing that almost anyone suffering from the threefold miseries of material existence will desire to hear the glories of the Lord from these books and thus benefit on the path of liberation. Two classes of men, however, will not never be interested. I hit the wrong button. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Happens to me all the time. Uh, two classes of men, However, we'll never be interested in hearing the message of Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, those who are determined to commit suicide and those determined to kill cows and other animals for the satisfaction of their tongues. And that's what Prabhupada said. The meat eaters uh, will never understand spiritual life. Hmm. Although such persons may make a show of hearing Srimad Bhagavatam at a Bhagavad Saptaha, this is but another creation of the karmis who cannot derive any benefit from such a performance. The word pashugna is important in this connection. Pashugna means butcher. Persons fond of performing ritualistic ceremonies. So here Prabhupada is defining a butcher in a very interesting way. This is according with the commentaries of the acharyas. Uh, persons fond of performing ritualistic ceremonies for elevation to the higher planetary systems must offer sacrifices, yajas, of killing an, by killing animals. Lord Buddha Dev, therefore, rejected the authority of the Vedas because his mission was to stop animal sacrifices which are recommended in the Vedic ritualistic ceremonies. So, Nindasi yajya videra shrutik jatam sataya vridaya tashita pashukatam keshavadrita buddha shavira jaya jagadisha de. Even though animal sacrifices are sanctioned in Vedic ceremonies, men who kill animals for such ceremonies are considered butchers. Butchers cannot be interested in Krishna consciousness, for they are already materially alert. Their only interest lies in developing comforts for the temporary body. And then a prophet quotes from the Bhagavad Gita, Bhogashvarya prasaktanam daya pritya. In the minds of those who are too attached to sense enjoyment and material opulence and who are bewildered by such things, the resolute determination of devotional service to the Supreme Lord does not take place. The second chapter, text 44. Srila Naratamadas Thakur says, Manusha Janma Paya. Radha Krishna Navajaya Janya Shunya Misha Koinu. Uh, and Prabhupada, it's willingly drinking poison. Anyone who is not Krishna conscious and who therefore does not engage in the service of the Lord is also Pashugna, for he is willingly drinking poison. Such a person cannot be interested in Krishna Kata because he still has a desire for material sense gratification. He is not. Nivrita Trishna. As it is said, Tri Vargi Kaste Purusha Vimukka Harimedasa. Those interested in Trivarga, that is dhar Dharma, Artha, and Kama, are religious for the sake of achieving a material position with which to gain better facilities for sense gratification. Such persons are killing themselves by willingly keeping themselves in the cycle of birth and death. They cannot be interested in Krishna consciousness. For Krishna Kata, topics about Krishna consciousness, they must be a speaker and a hearer, both of whom 
can be interested in Krishna consciousness if they are no longer interested in material topics. One can actually see how this attitude automatically develops in persons who are Krishna conscious. Although the devotees of the Krishna consciousness movement are quite young men, they no longer read materialistic newspapers, magazines, and so on, but they are no longer interested in such topics. Nivrita Tarshahai. They completely give up the bodily understanding of life. For topics concerning Uttama Shloka, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the spiritual master speaks and the disciple <coughs> hears with attention. Unless both of them are free from material desires, they cannot be interested in topics of Krishna consciousness. The spiritual master and disciple do not need to understand anything more than Krishna because simply by understanding Krishna and talking about Krishna, one becomes a perfectly learned person. Yasmin vigate sarvam evam vigatam bhavati. That means one who knows Krishna knows everything. The Lord sits within everyone's heart and by the grace of the Lord, the devotee receives instructions directly from the Lord himself, it says in Bhagavad Gita. Sarvacha cha amri sanavishto matatsmritir gyanamaponam cha vaidaischa savaraham eva vedyo vedantakrid vedavid eva cha ham. I am seated in everyone's heart, and for me come remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness. By all the Vedas, I am to be known. Indeed, I am the compiler of Vedanta, and I am the knower of the Vedas. Krishna consciousness is so exalted that one who is perfectly situated in Krishna consciousness under the direction of the spiritual master is fully satisfied by reading Krishna Kata as found in Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, and similar Vedic literatures. Since merely talking about Krishna is so pleasing, we can simply imagine how pleasing it is to render service to Krishna. Mm. So another uh, example of how uh, when one understands Krishna, one understands everything, is Srila Prabhupada's uh, conversations with uh, Shama Shundara when uh, they were trying to put together this philosophy book. I don't know if any of you heard about this. But Shama Shundara presented, of course, Shama Shundara didn't properly present the philosophers. You know, he, he just like perused or very quickly read the philosophers. But anyway, Prabhupada responded properly to the proper understanding of what the philosophers said, even though Shama Shundra, which is interesting, even though Shama Shundra didn't properly present the different philosophers, you know, like Sartre and uh, uh, Socrates and all these other philosophers, Shama Shundra, you know, a little bit imperfect to understanding Shama Shundra, but Prabhupada responded perfectly. And Prabhupada had not studied these people at all, which is really interesting. So Prabhupada was able to defeat the philosophies, all these different philosophies, because actually I worked on the philosophy book. Krishna Priya also worked on it many years ago. <clears throat> and, uh, well, a version of it came out uh, from New Vrindavan, but that actually wasn't the proper presentation. So we never came out with our version. But in any case, pro but we came to the realization that Prabhupada was able to perfectly deal with, that, with any philosophy and defeat them. And, and we saw that, you know, Prabhupada went to all around the world, met with uh, communists, uh, Katowski, you know, whatever his name was, in, in uh, Russia, and he defeated him. Just, and then Prabhupada didn't spend time studying all these other philosophies. He was able to counter these, because Krishna conscious philosophy is perfect. When discourses on Krishna Kata take place between a liberated spiritual master and his disciple, Others also sometimes take advantage of hearing these topics and also benefit. These topics are the medicine to stop the repetition of birth and death. The cycle of repeated birth and death by which one takes on different bodies again and again is called bhava or bhava rog. Rog means diseased. If anyone, you know, bhava of course means emotions. Uh, so the diseased emotions. If anyone willingly or unwillingly hears Krishna Kata, Prabhupada here says, willingly or unwillingly, which is really interesting. So that's why devotees go out and they preach and they distribute books, because people 
they're not really willing. His baba robe, the disease of birth and death, will certainly stop. Therefore, Krishna Kata is called Bhavoshada, the remedy to stop the repetition of birth and death. Karmis, or persons attached to material sense enjoyment, generally cannot give up material desires. But Krishna Kata is such a potent medicine that if one is induced to hear, there's that word induced, induced can mean something that's like tricked or just like cajoled or somehow or other they didn't want to hear but you induce them or you offer them something, you know, bribe. Here's some money, you know, sit in Bhagavatam class for a while. Induced. Uh, that means, uh, of course, yeah, Namabas. If one is induced to hear Krishna Kirtan, he will certainly be freed from this disease. A practical example is Dhruva Maharaj, who at the end of his tapasha was fully satisfied. When the Lord wanted to give Dhruva a benediction, Dhruva refused it. Swaman Kritartosmi Varam Yache. My dear Lord, he said, I am fully satisfied. I do not ask for any benediction for material sense gratification. We actually see that even young boys and girls in the Krishna conscious movement have given up their long practice of bad habits like illicit sex, meat eating, intoxication, and gambling. Uh, because Krishna consciousness is so potent that it gives them full satisfaction, they are no longer interested in material sense gratification. So there's several topics there, I mean, a lot of different topics. So <coughs> Prophet said here, one who uh, takes up Krishna consciousness, uh, the devotees who have given, taken up Krishna consciousness, uh, that they have full satisfaction, they're no longer interested in material sense gratification. So let's try to understand why people who have taken up Krishna consciousness again become interested in material sense gratification. And there's several reasons for that. First of all, they give up the chanting or and they go and or they commit offenses against Vaishnavas or offenses against the deities or offenses against the holy name or they take bad association uh, actually uh, Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur analyzes Anarthas because Anarthas is what pulls us away from Krishna consciousness he says Anarthas have four different sources he says one source of course is uh, sinful activity, that's obvious. You know, that one becomes involved somehow or other because of past habit in sinful activity. I mean, and, and in a premeditated way, because Krishna says in the Gita, uh, that my devotee will never perish, and my devotee, in spite of the most abominable actions, to be considered saintly because he's rightly situated. And Prophet said, that's if a devotee commits an abominable activity accidentally, not premeditatively. So sometimes you find someone will premeditate because of bad association, they'll perform some sinful activity, so an art does arise because of that. Or an art does arise because of pious activities too, which is really interesting. You know, when, when actually, what does it mean pious activity? That you engage in mundane, <coughs> Charity, Monday welfare work, without any connection to Krishna. And of course, it's not that we see someone dying on the street, we think that's mundane activity. Try to help them. You know, you could try to help them and you chant Hare Krishna, you give some prasadam or whatever, you know, pull them off the street before they get run over with a car. But sometimes you find devotees, and this is not in reference to the to the hospitals we have in India because the hospitals are very Krishna conscious. You know, they have Prabhupada there, all the patients, see Lord Jagannath, 
and everything. It's very Krishna. But if one engages in mundane, pious activities, uh, that can actually create an anartha. One begins to think that one's the doer. One's able to, to give someone their good fortune or create someone's good fortune. And uh, that's actually very dangerous. Uh, so so uh, sinful activities, pious activities, and then also uh, offenses, which we already mentioned, uh, can create an artist. And the final one is, according to Srila Bhakti uh, Vishwanath Chakrabhati Thakur, is uh, the bhakti itself. One has to be very careful. Like Prabhupada, sometimes say devotional service is like a uh, razor's edge. And Prabhupada there was referring to the uh, old type of razor that you used to see in the barber shops, which is like a, <clears throat> a straight razor. And Prabhupada said, a little inattention and you get blood. So what Prabhupada meant is referring to the uh, uh, devotional service itself, that when one performs devotional service, gets appreciation or one gets uh, followers or one gets money all these different things that are extremely dangerous for the uh, conditioned soul so so then one gets allured by these things and then one begins to think uh, I'm perfect, powerful, happy <coughs> divine and demoniac natures and then one develops, the false ego becomes further developed. So, because of all these reasons, even though one has had a higher taste, then one loses the higher taste. And one even gets to the point, like Ramchandra Puri in the uh, uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita, because Ramchandra Puri, one gets to the point of thinking one's, like Prabhupada talked about, his fault finding is devotional service. You know, Ramchandra Puri, just to, just to reiterate or to tell the story, Ramchandra Puri, uh, because he had offended his spiritual master and fall, found, fought, found faults in his spiritual master, uh, Madhavendra Puri, when Madhavendra Puri was leaving the planet, he, he got cursed by his spiritual master because of that offense. And then he became a fault finder of all the devotees. And, and he was thinking that his finding fault in the Vaishnavas was actually bhakti. You know, he thought, well, I'm helping people advance in devotional service by finding fault. And you, you actually see this. Whoops. You see this on the internet to a large extent, or to a very large extent right now, that, you know, people d dedicate whole websites to finding fault in others. And they'll think, this is, we're going to purify ISKCON and for perceived faults, or maybe even there's uh, some actual faults. You know, like Prabhupada described, we should be like the honeybees or the uh, bumblebees or whatever bees who look for the nectar, you know, the pollen and the flower, rather than looking for, like the, uh, uh, like the flies that look for the stool. Actually, it's interesting, in, in uh, Hindi they call honeybees Madhu, Madhu, Madhu Mukhi or something like that. No, Madhu, Madhu Maki, Madhu Maki. So a fly is Maki, and a honey fly is Madhu Maki, which is an interesting, interesting expression. So it's a fly of honey. Anyways, that's a bee. So, uh, so anyway, so, so we have to be careful of this because you can get drawn into this fault-finding mentality. And then you'll think, this is my devotional service to purify things or to find fault or something like that. So anyway, and this is why people deviate from Krishna consciousness for the various reasons. So one has to be very, very careful about their association, dealing with Krishna's material energy, especially as you take some responsibility in the Krishna consciousness movement. Anyway, so people do deviate from Krishna consciousness. So any questions or comments? Actually, there's a lot of other things we could say yes. I've never been to that site. Yeah. Because yeah. there's no real nature or real nature or what they're really, really doing. They see one little thing inside of a girl or a boy or a devotee. And they have full 
amplify it. Yeah, so Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said, I see, you know, the eye or the mote in your eye because I myself have a log in my eye. And of course, there's that also expression that, you know, if you point your finger at someone, ten fingers or nine fingers come back and point to you. So, we should be very careful. Uh, we shouldn't see the spots on the moon, we should see the moon, the beautiful moon. That's the point. You know, you can look at the moon and say, it's really ugly, there's all these spots. Okay. That happy note.